dear learners welcome to this video lecture on digital camera basics this is the part 1 today we embark on an exciting journey into the world of digital photography this video is the first part of a two part series that will equip you with a comprehensive understanding of digital cameras and their operations in this session we will explore the fundamental principles that govern how digital camera work from the inception of digital photography to the key components that make it all possible we will lay the groundwork for you to capture stunning images and unlock your creative potential before we start talking about digital cameras let's think about how photography has evolved over time imagine a timeline or picture showing important moments in photography the first one is uh, important thing is the invention of camera photography began a long time ago in the in the early 1800s someone first made a camera in 1900 a company called kodak made a camera called the brownie it was a big deal because it allowed regular people to take pictures easily for many years cameras use something called film to take pictures people even figured out how to make color pictures which was pretty cool around the end of the 1900s something amazing happened people started using digital technology for photography this changed everything because we could take and share pictures in a whole new way so as we learn about digital cameras remember all these steps that got us to where we today with digital photography it has been a fascinating journey now let us watch a weird video related to the history of camera of photography for better understanding the earlier version of the camera was called the obscura it emerged during the 16th century the device was essentially a dark chamber that european artists used inside this dark chamber there was a small hole and on the opposite side of this hole there was either a white sheet or a white wall the reflections from the object being observed enter the dark chamber through the small hole on the white sheet or wall inside the chamber a temporary image would form this image could only be seen as long as the light continued to enter through the hole in the year 1694 a Dutch scientist named William Hamburg conducted an experiment and made a significant discovery. He found that substances like silver nitrate, silver chloride and silver bromide underwent changes in their textures when exposed to light. These changes he termed as photochemical changes. Based on this theory, the first concept of making the images produced by the obscura more permanent was developed by using chemicals like silver chloride and silver bromide. In 1816, a French scientist named Joseph Nipse attempted to use silver chloride coated paper inside a camera obscura instead of a regular paper. This marked an important step in the history of photography as it paved the way for the development of more permanent photographic images. The image printed permanently on that paper marked the invention of the photo printing technique. Nipsey pioneering a work opened the door for professional photography. He referred to this process as heliography. Following Nipsey, the experiment were continued by Louis Jacques Mandé de Gouret in France itself, further advancing the field of photography. De Gure simplified and adapted the procedure, making it more practical and for commercial purpose. His developed photography method became widely known as De Gure type. The photographs produced using this technique were ref referred to as De Gure type photographs. In this process, he used silver coated copper plates to capture images. The method remained in use until around 1860 contributing significantly to the early days of the commercial photography. After the degoded method, the col uh, collodion method became prominent. This technique was invented by 
Frederick Scott Archer from England. In the collodion process, the photosensitive material was used in a liquid form, which is why called the collodion weight plate method. It represented an advanced version of photographic negative during that era. Despite the various photography techniques developed, photography was not widely popular until the 19th century. These processes were complex and time-consuming, making them inaccessible to the average people. However, the 20th century brought about a photography revolution when George Eastman from America founded the Eastman Kodak Company. The Eastman Com Kodak Company began producing small and lightweight cameras. In the year 1900, the Brownie camera introduced by the company sparked a significant revolution in the photography. This innovation marked the transition from older cameras that use the photographic reels to more accessible and user-friendly photography equipments. In the subsequent years, other companies such as Leica and Argas also entered the camera manufacturing industry. During this time, black and white photography was the norm. However, in 1935, the Kodak company introduced the Kodak Chroma Color Film making the beginning of the era of color photography. This innovation allowed the photographers to capture images in vibrant and lifelike colors. As the time passed, single lens reflex or SLR lenses become more refined with the additional features and improvement. Gradually, advancements were made in the photography and the era of digital techniques emerged. Starting from around the 1980s, Digital cameras began to replace the older film reel cameras in popularity and uses. This transition marked a significant shift in the photography as digital technology offered numerous advantages and convenience. The advent of digital photography marked a mo monumental revolution in the field. It brought photography into the hands of a common people. No longer did individual have to deal with the hassle of loading film reels or spend hours in the dark room developing pictures. With the advancement and affordability of digital cameras, it became much easier for anyone to become a photographer and capture moments with ease. Now we come to what is digital camera. A digital camera captures, processes and stores images in digital format. And the main key advantages of digital camera is, first one is the instant image preview. With digital cameras, you can instantly see the captured image on the camera display. Second one is the storage and reusability. Digital camera can store image digitally, eliminating the need of physical film or enabling the reuse of storage media. To gain a better understanding of this concept, let us view the open educational resource video. Parts of a camera. Here is a basic DSLR camera. Uh, the DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. And what that means is that we have the lens and the reflex part is that in most, uh, well in DSLRs or SLRs, non-digital versions, there is a mirror that's right here and it pops up when you take the photo. So that's all that really means. Um, when people talk about mirrorless cameras, it just means that there is no mirror. That instead of popping up, uh, the sensor, which is right back here, just turns on and off. So let's start with number one, we have the lens, right? The body is this whole area here. And so on this diagram, it's lens and then the body of the camera. The mirror is this part here. And the mirror, uh, it's really only function is to take the image that's coming in through the lens and then pop it up into another series of mirrors right up here so that you can see through the viewfinder what you're actually taking a photo of. Okay. Um, right back here is the sensor. Okay. And that's the part that's actually reading the light that's coming into your camera. And we have the viewfinder. It's right here. The shutter release, which is the button you hit to take the photo, the hot shoe, which is where you would put a flash on 
or other types of devices like um, some cameras that don't automatically come with Wi-Fi, you can put in a Wi-Fi receiver. And then the mode dial, which is the different modes that you can take photos of on a camera. Um, so when you take a photo, the light is coming through the lens. And then this, you hit the shutter release button and the mirror will pop up and the shutter will actually open, letting all the light coming into your camera to hit the sensor. Now let's take a closer look at each of these components and explore how they collaborate to produce impressive digital images. We can do this by watching another way of video on this subject. After the picture is clicked in a DSLR camera, the camera takes data from millions of pixels and processes it in less than a one second. The most important component of a DSLR camera is the image sensor which always remains in dark when the picture is clicked. It opens his eyes and closes them immediately. The science behind this is amazing. Full form of DSLR without searching on Google, try to note it down. After watching this video, make it according to your own. Light does all the wonders in a camera. When light falls on an object, it becomes visible to us. Why this box is appearing green because when sunlight falls on it, light has many colors and the box has absorbed all the colors of the light except green and the remaining green color reflected back. And the reflected rays reach our eyes and we see the object and tell that is a green colored box. In the same way, the reflected rays reach towards the camera. Light first enters the lens of the camera. Inside the lens, there are sets of concave and convex lenses which are used to zoom in and zoom out the images. This thing is called digital zoom. The aperture is set in the middle of these lenses, which, which passes the light forward. The aperture is an opening by reducing and increasing the light entering the camera is controlled. Aperture is generally denoted by F. As the aperture increases, its opening becomes smaller. Aperture works on a very intelligent way in the camera. I will tell you its use in the ending of the video. Aperture is very important for great photography. Now here are the work of lens is done. Now the processing of camera starts. Light emitted from the lens reaches forward near the main mirror. Main mirror is set at an angle of 45 degrees. If you look carefully, the viewfinder shows the object which we are going to click. It happens slightly above the lens. So main mirror shows whatever object is in front of a camera in a viewfinder. The pendra prism is placed above the main mirror. So light ray after hitting the main mirror reaches the pendra prism in such a way where we can see an object clearly. The shutter is placed behind the mirror and the image sensor is placed behind it. Generally, the shutter remains closed. It, is, it has a very high speed. In the camera that I have, the shutter speed goes up to the maximum of 1 by 8000. That is, it opens and closes in 8000th part of a 1 second. And to make it work so fast, it has a separate motor. When we click a picture, the main mirror goes up and blocks the view of the viewfinder. When we take a picture, you will see that the area of the viewfinder is blocked for a short time. Now the light rays go directly to the shutter. There are two curtains near the shutter which divided into multiple leaves. So when the light reaches the shutter, the lower curtain fast falls and the light directly reaches the image sensor. After the shutter opens up to a decided time, the second curtain comes from the above. The image reaching the center turns off the light and both the shutters go back up. As soon as the shutter is closed, the mirror comes back to its place. In just this short time, the image sensor sees whatever the object is and starts further processing. The sound we hear while taking a photo is the shutter and mirror only. 
the remote sensor is the heart of the camera in today's time according to the latest technology cmos technology is used in the C image sensor which consumes less power if you know about cmos you can describe it in discussion forum if you look closely at the image sensor then many boxes are visible here which are called pixels say if there is a 16 megapixel camera and the image sensor will have 16 million pixels that is such boxes will be made every pixel of the image sensor is a photodiode which works just like a solar panel as soon as the light falls on it the electrons in it start moving and the current flows there are three layers in the image sensor at the top is the micro lens then the color filter and then photodiode which we call the pixel let us understand the processing of single pixel first comes the micro lens which works to focus the light on the pixel here it is important for you to understand that there are only three colors for cameras red green and blue mixing these three colors the camera makes a lot of color variance so when the light reaches the color filter passing through the micro lens then the color filter recognizes the color from the combination of color and passes it to the pixel pixel is a light sensing device that converts light into electric current in actual the photodiode is an pn junction when the light falls on it the moment of the electron starts in it and faster the electron moves the higher will be the intensity of the current a capacitor and amplifier are placed above each pixel. The capacitor does not allow the charge to be lost and the amplifier amplifies the charge and sends it forward. All the pixels are connected to the bus and send charge parallelly to an electro-digital converter. ADC converts the information from current intensity of each pixel into 0 and 1 and stores in the memory. When the charge from each pixel is collected, image sensor is ready to take the next image. Now a question should come to your mind that only the current passes through the image sensor to the ACD. Then how it can be known from the current that which color is near which pixel in the photo? So the answer is there are many colors like black that almost absorb light. Some absorb less light. Because of these colors, more light of some pixels reaches to photodiode and less light of some pixels reaches to photodiode. Now the more light there is, the more charge it will have. And the analog to digital converter sees the charge of the pixel itself, how much charge it has. And from this it converts the analog data into digital by deciding the color. You may know how fast camera takes pixels. The pixels I told you prior gets completed while clicking a pixel. Something interesting about the aperture of a camera. You must have here a word called depth of field. In this camera focuses on some area and blurs the rest of the area. This is the wonder of uh, aperture itself. For example, there are three items in front of a camera if we <coughs> click this photo. By setting aperture f to uh, 1.4 in this case, almost light will enter the camera. First of all, whatever light comes out of green box, its focal point will be made on the image sensor itself, due to which the box will be clearly visible to us. If you look at the monkey, it's large, due to which the focal point will go before the image sensor. And after passing the focal point, the light will spread in the distance then this image will be blurred that is the image sensor will consider it out of focus if we talk about the, his ball then being small its focal point will be formed after this image sensor due to which it will be out of focus and will be blurred the result of the final image looks something like this if you take a photo after seeing the aperture f20 this time the aperture will stop a lot of light. If you look at the light of the box which is passing through the small area, then the focal point will be formed on the image sensor. In the case of monkey, when little light reaches forward, 
then like last time this time also the focal point will be formed before the image sensor but here after passing through the focal point the light is not diverging much because now the aperture is not allowing much light to enter due to which the image sensor will consider these two in focus same will happen with the ball and this time in the final image all three objects will be clearly visible this is how aperture decides depth of field Finally, I have told you the complete working of a DSLR which can help you in photography. Now, through your own understanding, write down the full form of DSLR in the discussion forum. In conclusion, we have embarked in a journey through the fundamentals of digital cameras in part 1 of this video. Let's recap what we have learned. We have explored the essential components of a digital camera including the lens, sensor and processor understood the process of capturing light and converting it to a digital data discovered the role of analog to digital conversion and image processing we have just scratched the surface of the incredible world of digital photography understanding these basics is a crucial as they form the foundation of your journey as a photographer but our exploration does not end here join us in the next part where we will deal deeper into the operation of digital cameras and explore the essential maintenance practices. In digital camera part 2 operation and maintenance we will cover how to make the most of a camera's features including shooting modes and controls, tips and tricks for capturing stunning images in various scenarios, essential maintenance practices to keep your camera in top condition for years to come. So get ready to take your photography skills to the next level. Thank you.